My name's Patrick. I think that in Rochester, I think that it could be growing. I mean, it, it it's, I mean, there's a band, a dime a dozen. I mean, you could find tons of bands around here. Um, in like 1985, I think it was, is it, it was 85 or 84, I got into my first band with Nick and my other roommate Todd, and it was called Ludovico Treatment. It was called Elmer Fudd's Gun at first, but we changed it to Ludovico Treatment. If you get a little bit of a foundation here with a smaller label, then you know you can you can you can expand on that. It was it was our real party band, you know. We yeah. just we get drunk and get up there and just jam. It was like rock and roll hardcore, you know. It, was, it wasn't. There was so much rock and roll left over from when they were playing their rock and roll stuff that it was just really like rocking. And after about three years of that, our drummer went to college, so Nick and I went <coughs> and we found another drummer and another bassist and we formed Bent, and Bent has been together ever since. Well, I think that um, considering that that you know what you have to when you want to quote make it big you have to be in like uh, at Los Angeles or or New York or, or something like that where all the record labels are I do know that there are a few independent uh, record labels there's one that I know of here that tends mostly to uh, rap and industrial uh, industrial pop and and uh, house music <laughs> my name is Clint works and uh, I'm producer and owner of Rock Ruling Records and uh, we produce and manufacture 12 inches and uh, dance groups for uh, local Rochester artists on a national scene. So started back in 87 I was working at DKX Radio, I was music director there for three and a half years at that time and one of the guys I was working with had a rap group and they wanted to distribute it and they wanted someone to take care of it and so they asked me to be their manager and it kind of took off from there. I have a lot of contacts now, I like see. all over, everywhere around the country. We get a lot of mail too because we got really good reviews in Maximum Rock and Roll so a lot of people saw them and wrote to us and we've been in a bunch of other small zines around the country, just interviews and stuff like that, and reviews, and so it's it's really starting to take off now. You know, look through any underground, like Maximum Rock and Roll, look through that every month in the magazine section, and you can find <coughs> ten or fifteen good magazines that you could send your tape to, and they'll review it and maybe give you an interview. It's it's not that hard. You just have to, you have to be determined, you know, you have to put a lot of time into it, a lot of effort. Uh, it depends on, I mean, it, it's just like how the record business is anywhere, you know, it depends on where you are and, uh, and who you know, really. It's all a matter of money, really. It's a matter of context, too, because if you have, I know, I don't want to be down on, like, have you ever heard of Spit Pope? Yeah. They got a seven inch out. Say. They were out. I mean, they'd only been playing together for like five months, and because their guitarist Jeff had contacts, they got a seven inch out. And that's all it really is. I mean, they're not really even a very good band. They're, I guess they're they're kind of gimmicky and a little weird because they make a lot of noise and smear pudding on their chests and stuff like that. But they got a record deal just because they knew people. And if you have enough money, I mean, if you have $700, you can do your own album for, it's real easy to do, you just, 
make the recording, send it to a pressing mastering company, and it'll come back to you, and you just do the covers. It's real simple. Initially, if you're, you know, by the time that you do the initial studio time, uh, getting graphics for the labels, uh, pictures for the groups, and everything, you're looking at about $5,000 to start with about uh, 1,200 records. And that's just the initial. And what, you know, my objective is, is business as well as promotion, I have to make sure that it's cost effective, that I'm going to make my money back on the first 1,200 records and then profit. All of us will profit after the first 1,200. If they don't sell, then we take a loss on uh, the amount of records. So you're looking at about $5,000. The group said that the video on it's about 7500 As a matter of fact, I do know of someone that did release a single, uh, personally. And uh, it took a lot of work. First, of course, you have to record it on, the la on, a, on somewhat of a label. You just have to get the recording time. You have to get the demos, uh, you know, send it away to get it, uh, to get it printed and etc. Then, basically, you know, it's hit or miss. The hard part about it is getting distribution, you yeah. know actually getting someone to buy a product. Well, the artists don't come up with the money. The, the, the deal that I have is uh, a lot of small record companies, you know, these shady guys get the groups to pay for the records and then <laughs> and to pay for everything. And then the, the artist is uh, responsible for it. My reasoning is if I'm going to sign an artist and I'm going to promote them, then why would they have to put any money into the project? If I believe in, in it, then I feel that I'm... Uh, responsible enough to take care of all the expenses and if we make some money um, we take our expenses back off and give it back to the group I mean it's done on a business way just like we're set up just like a major label we have uh, for legal uh, legal representation uh, accounting we're set up just like a major label we give our artists royalty statements twice a year uh, we pay royalties when there's money to be made we take care of publishing so we're set up we're not like you know, just like a house set up, we set up just like everyone else, a major label would be set up. Um, <clears throat> I think that Jazzberries is the first thing that comes to mind. Um, a lot of local bands there, I think there's a very wide variety of bands that play there. Um, I've heard from reggae to punk, um, you know, new age music, everything. Well, the type of stuff we're doing, rap, there's really not a market in Rochester. I mean, there's not a per se. I do club nights and stuff, and I, I throw, a lot, and that's how a lot of kids know me because I do. I'm one of the only guys that promotes rap parties around town. Um, so there's really not a place here, but a lot of my guys we've played in New York before. Same with the industrial dancing. I mean, you have Heaven and X and those guys, but a lot of those guys don't play a lot of deep industrial stuff. Um, and there's really not a place for those bands to gig. You know, there are a lot of people here who listen to it, but we've played New York with Pitch Black and we have the new group event and we're talking uh, to uh, one of the management companies that manage Nine Inch Nails right now about picking up uh, those guys on a mini tour, so let's see what happens with that. It's still pretty discouraging to be a hardcore band in Rochester because there's really no place to play besides Backstreets. Uh, Backstreets also. Uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, metal bands play there. They, they have a lot of uh, local bands playing there as additional to some bands that are, you know, more famous that, that have gotten a start or maybe like underground bands, so to speak, play there. And they rip you off every chance they can get, you know. Really? They, yeah. It's, it's, it's an okay place to play if you don't care about making money or even making enough money to you know like 30 bucks or something we played there once and made six dollars mm -hmm. and it was a halfway decent crowd they just give you this whole runaround about how they need a certain amount to rent out the club and then they need a certain amount for the sound guy and then they need a certain amount for the light guy who, I don't know who gives a shit about lights I mean some guy up there flicking lights back and forth it's I don't want to pay for someone to do that for me and then they say all this stuff about their help and it ends up you know they'll make three four hundred dollars at the door and the bands will end up if there's three bands playing they'll end up splitting hundred and fifty dollars mm -hmm. which is it might work out economically but it just doesn't seem right so it gets real aggravating yeah. there's a major problem I know this is real political I don't want to get into this but with the rap thing and I, I don't it's not with the industrial thing but every time we we've, we've tried to do something I mean we've had peaceful uh, gathering rap every people uh, associate violence with rap. I mean, it's like uh, 
people associate violence with a lot of other things and there's you know violence wherever you're going to go there's going to be violence at a rock show or at teen night at 2001 or this and that but every time we've tried to develop a rap scene and we've had something going consistently good for more than like four or five weeks than we've had uh the rochester police department who you know kind of they come down and and they kind of uh, provoke things i mean it just to name something, we had uh, a good rap show going on downtown at the Rocks Club. They weren't doing any business. I went with a proposition, and we're getting like seven, eight hundred people during the summer. And then, like on the fifth week, the the weekend after Fourth of July, you, when the club ends, you got uh, eight police, eight policemen outside with billy clubs pulled, and there's no violence or anything like that. And it just kind of provokes the kids in the first place. You know that uh, there's a negative thing about rap, and then you see these policemen there and that's just like provoking them to start trouble in the first place. Our bassist Mike doesn't, he just doesn't like playing there. He has very strong feelings about playing there. He, he doesn't like the people there. He doesn't like, he doesn't like the management. I mean the people that come, a lot of times it's our friends and people in the scene so, I don't know, he probably likes some of the people there. It's, I guess it's mostly the management that he can't stand and just the whole feeling of the whole place is real like scummy and yeah I mean, but I don't care I'd play there yeah it doesn't matter to me just I mean especially if all we have to do is load up our stuff and go down the street and play yeah it doesn't make any difference to me but we've tried to work with the police department we've tried to build the rap scene here we've tried to build a club night and do some contest and get some people involved and get the community involved and actually do something with the police or rap rally we talked about it Howland Bowl last year and they really pretty much squashed that there's like no way that we're going to do this not sure about the only other places I've really been are big cities you know where there's tons and tons of people that can come to shows so it doesn't matter if all of them come but in Rochester, there's in any small town, there's a, a lack. You know, there's apathy, and people, people are like, oh, I don't have enough money to go see the show, and they sit home and they drink a six pack or something like that, which costs six bucks, and they could get into the show for six bucks anyway. So, I think that the community should should be behind their local bands a little bit more. Um, whether they become successful or not, I think I'd rather see a, a larger draw to these places. There, it's lacking. It's always lacking. We've had good turnouts for the last few shows we've had because we don't play out too often. So if anyone wants to see us, they usually come when we do play because they're not going to be able to see us for a while. So they usually do come. So I'm saying I don't know if there's ever going to be a rap scene in Rochester. It's, Rochester's real conservative uh, as to any type of music. If you go to Buffalo, I mean, I go to Buffalo all the time and they do a lot of different things with a lot of different rap groups and dance groups and things of that sort. So, I don't know about the rap scene in Rochester. I'd just like to get some groups out of here, get them on a major label, and then maybe some people uh, will open their eyes and things of that sort about rap in Rochester. And, like, Alice Donut came to town a few months back, and there were probably 20 people there. And Alice Donut is an incredible band, yeah, you know? Yeah. I mean, and they're known as well. Yeah, and there was no one there. I think it was part of it was because it was a Sunday matinee and it was at Backstreet's but you know what difference does that really make it's yeah. it's a good band it's it's cheap who gives a shit if Backstreet's smells I mean you can put up with a smell for a little while if you want to see a good band there's been a lot of shows like that a lot of good alternative bands come through Rochester and they just don't get a good turnout and that means they're not going to want to come back because if they don't get a good turnout they don't think anyone's here that's into their music so What's the need of coming back? All the colleges do have uh, bands come. For instance, uh, a couple months back, the Sundays, uh, a new English band, uh, a smaller band, they're on the rise. They were here in Brockport, which is about uh, half an hour away. So you get you get the college scene too, where you know the smaller, the smaller up and coming bands, uh, where where you have the modern music, uh, they usually play. Explaining when we do club nights, I should say rap club nights, we invite the public out to, to to listen to a lot of rap stuff that's recorded now 
and we play rap videos, and then we premiere some of our own rap groups to, to get up on stage and, and rap and things of that sort. It's real profitable for them. And now, if I wasn't doing the club night, we'd go to a club owner and say, hey, we want to do a rap show with this group. Um, on management, the groups make 75% of, of the profit. They make 75% after the gross. If there's expenses for travel and stuff like that, we take it out, pay the bill. There's, I don't think there's any way we could possibly make money I don't, I don't know many bands in Rochester that can actually make a living off of being a band in Rochester it's just because maybe some, some of these glam metal bands or something like that or a, a phony like college reggae band, you know, someone that plays Bob Marley covers or something like that and gets paid $250 to go to frat parties or something like that and yeah. play all the cool whatever. Uh, the record business for artists is more promotion than anything else. Most of the artists make their money off of what's called publishing and they make their money off of gigs because record sales, most major labels only pay their artists between nine, excuse me, between five and nine percent of total uh, uh, record sales. They caught five to nine points um, out of 100 points. Now, the, why we say points instead of percentages because most labels pay their artists 100 percent I mean they pay the artists 15 percent 15 points of 90 percent so you automatically take 10 percent off the top so that we call it points um, they pay between I said 15 there because that's what I do I pay my artists 15 points on a hundred um, and a lot of small labels do that because, hey, our exposure is, we're not going to spend X amount of dollars on radio. We are going to spend a lot of money, but we're not going to spend, you know, a million in, in radio, a million in it for the video and things of that sort. We're going to spend a, a low budget, try to make that money back. It's profitable for us to make the money back and get them their 15% at the same time. Uh, and that's the way a lot of major labels work. But a lot of majors, like I said, they take their producer's fee off of the 5 or 9% that they're giving this artist. The producer gets his fee out of that. So the producer may get three points out of that. So the artist is only getting 6% of record sales. You know, so. I think we got into it on the very tail end of hardcore and when it was still really an alternative. It's still an alternative, but it's a lot more accepted now. You know, if you see someone walking down the street with a with a blue mohawk, it's not really that big of a deal anymore. Yeah. It's just kind of like, well, this has been going on for 10 years now, so it's just another guy with a blue mohawk. <laughs> Excuse me. Certainly. Get that y'all on tape, ladies and gentlemen. What bands do you hate? What bands do I hate? Yeah. Oh, God. Duran Duran.